Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Let me remind you that the dinner is in honor of Judge Babaduro. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I would like to just ad address for a moment the uh, sort of the, the subject of who is to be honored with the, uh, with the Kennison Award tonight and, and uh, a couple of words about why. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. I've thought this through on um, earlier today, and I'm going to do it by kind of, I guess you could call it a, a bookend speech, uh, filling in the middle. Uh, and uh, I'm going to start with my first bookend uh, with my recollection of the first time that uh, Judge Barbadoro and I ever met. I verified the date. It was back in 1979. And uh, I, was, I was in Concord for uh, a, uh, an extraordinary meeting of a board of trustees I was on that had to get something done before the summer was over. So I think it was in the month of August. And before I went home that night, um, I, uh, I swung by Hansi and Bill Glenn's house just to uh, catch up. And while we were, while we were talking uh, uh, in their sitting room, uh, this sort of young man walked in, uh, and it uh, turned out he was a, a rising third-year law student whom the Attorney General's office had hired to help Bill Glenn uh, prepare for the Laconia State School case. And we were, we were introduced, uh, and he, he seemed like a decent guy. But I didn't hear an awful lot from him in the course of the evening. Uh, uh, he sort of let us, including me, do the talking, and I'm never going to blame anybody for, for that. Uh, but uh, he, was, he was not a guy who was sort of pushing himself uh, forward into, uh, into, into our consciousness. Well, a year or so later, uh, he appeared again, uh, and this time uh, he had taken a job in the AG's office. Uh, and I used to run into him from time to time uh, when, when Bill and I would, uh, would take Saturday White Mountain hikes. Uh, so I, I could attest to the fact that he was a good hiker and I got to know him um, a little better. Uh, and he still seemed like a, a, a really good guy. Uh, but when I, when I really got to find out what we were working with here, uh, was bear in mind I was on the uh, Speria Court then, it was a couple of years after he had gone into the AG's office uh, and he showed up uh, to prosecute a homicide case that was being tried uh, in front of me. And um, without going into great detail, let me say that when, when he got up to cross-examine the only short description of it could be the uh, the the, uh, the the word that I guess comes back from uh, comes out of the 30s. It was gangbusters. Uh, and um, by the time the by the time the case was over, I had sort of derived a, a Barbadoro rule, uh, and that is if if you are a, a criminal defendant and you find out that Paul Barbadoro is going to prosecute your case, unless you have Mother Teresa as an alibi witness, <laughs> you, better, you better make a plea deal just as good as you can get. And uh, there, was, there was no question then and in subsequent cases in, in which I saw him that when, when he had the authority, there was no question about um, <clears throat> who was exercising it. Uh, and I, I think, uh, from what I'm told, that is equally true today when he is, uh, when he is on the other side of the bench. But I realized, uh, I realized then uh, that we weren't dealing with uh, somebody who was merely a, a nice guy personally. Uh, we were dealing with somebody with, with real substance. Uh, and everything since then has sort of confirmed the view uh, he went from being, uh, as, as probably some of you remember, he went from, from uh, being in the AG's office criminal division to being legal counsel to uh, Senator Rudman, uh, and I guess devoted a lot of his time to the, to the ethics committee, which the senator was on. 
In about a year, or less than a year maybe, after he finished that, I, he, he became the deputy chief uh, general counsel to the Iran-Contra Committee, uh, which must have been sort of the dream assignment of, of, a, of a young lawyer. Uh, and looking back on it, uh, it's also one, one great credential. Uh, he then did something which is rare uh, in, in the legal profession, or at least to my knowledge, um, not so rare in, say, England, but it is here. Uh, when he went into private practice, first with Warren Reno and then with, with Rath Young, Pignatelli, and Oyer, uh, he did criminal defense work. And one of, one, of the, one of the great virtues, at least in the old days of the English system next to ours, is that uh, you would defend one day and you would prosecute another day, simply because the way things were set up. Uh, it, it made for very good lawyers, uh, and in fact, all saw it from both sides in, in just that way. Well, then came, uh, as, as you know, then came uh, uh, 1992, and uh, uh, this is, in a way, this is, this is kind of an encore for me because uh, I took his oath uh, when he was sworn in as a, as a U.S. district judge. And I remember something that I said that day. Uh, uh, I spoke for a few minutes. Uh, and I summed up uh, my prophecy uh, with, a, with a story, the, the closing line of which was from an old, uh, an old song, uh, you ain't seen nothing yet. And uh, I think I've come down with a few sound opinions in my life, but none of them uh, is going to be any sounder than that one was. And I've, I've even brought a little crib sheet with me in case I start forgetting the, uh, even an abbreviated list uh, of, of uh, what I want to say or know about what, uh, what he has done since 1992, uh, because it, it's, it's a very good clue to the, to the substance uh, of the man. Uh, and, the, and the New Hampshire Bar Association, uh, he's been on the... Uh, the Committee on Professionalism, uh, the Committee on Unauthorized Practice of Law, and uh, within, the, within the federal system, uh, he's been on a, on a series of, of committees uh, of the Judicial Conference of the United States. Uh, he's been on the, the, the Criminal Law Committee. Uh, he's been on the uh, Multi-State Litigation Committee, which is no plum assignment. Uh, he's been on, on the... Um, Judicial Education Committee, not only as a committee member, but as a, as a teacher, uh, teacher of, of uh, neophyte judges. And, and he has done teaching beyond uh, just the sort of the, 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 the federal scheme, because uh, at various times in the past few years, he's been an adjunct professor uh, at the law school here in New Hampshire. He's been an adjunct uh, professor uh, at the Tuck School at Dartmouth to sort of teach the, the young tycoons what they need to know about the, the, uh, the legal system. Uh, and uh, he, is, he, he is almost an, an educator uh, by, by avocation. Uh, and he has also been uh, a member of the, um, of the Judicial Conference of the United States. Uh, more recently, he's been on the executive committee of the Judicial Conference of the United States, and even more recently, uh, he has been, been named the chairman of that executive committee. And uh, I, I assure you that I'm, I am abbreviating a little bit. I've, I've left some out. Uh, but what I've said, I think, is sufficient uh, to say that this is sort of an extraordinary record uh, of, of dedication and of service uh, to the judiciary uh, and to the broader good uh, that the judiciary serves. Uh, there is also one more thing. He didn't tell me that he had been named chairman of the executive committee uh, of the Judicial Conference of the United States. I had to read it in the paper somewhere. Uh, what is remarkable about this uh, is that as chairman of that conference, 
He is second only to the Chief Justice of the United States uh, in responsibility and authority uh, for the, the, uh, the policy and the rules that govern the practice of every United States District Court and every United States Court of Appeals in the United States. Uh, but he didn't let on to me. Uh, and that's, that's, that's the bookend. Um, it, is, it is an amazing thing to find the, the, the combination of professional eminence and authority uh, and the kind of personal modesty uh, who doesn't even mention what he failed to mention. Uh, you know, we don't, have, we don't have too many ideals in life uh, in which we find somebody who actually realizes the ideal. Uh, but that's what we've got in Paul Barbaduro, uh, who is the, uh, the, the same kid I remember from that, uh, that evening back in 1979, uh, except that he wears a robe uh, and he has attained eminence in his profession. Like, uh, like some of you, maybe uh, most of, a lot of you here, I remember Frank Kennison. And I, I don't know whether the, the sort of the shade of Frank Kennison is sort of hovering above us, paying attention to what we're doing this evening. But uh, I can tell you that if he is, when he sees who is being given an award this year, the award in his name, he's got a big smile on his face. Uh, and uh, I can tell you even more definitely that I got a big smile on my face to have the opportunity to declare Paul Barbaduro the recipient of the Kennison Award this year.